眉のうちの人は何を考えておるのでしょうか共に交わり Kuan is one of those PS2 survival horror titles that fell through the cracks. While its gameplay is nothing to write home about, it makes up for it in droves with its atmosphere and setting. Few titles have been able to build a strong sense of dread in a niche like Kuan. It's an intriguing setting and tale that will keep your attention till the very end, and long after. Let's take a gander at one of the more unsettling and overlooked survival horror titles from the PlayStation 2 era. To note I'm playing Kuan using the PC SX2 emulator. I've upscaled the resolution and applied a widescreen patch. If you're interested in playing on an emulator, check out the PC SX2 wiki, as there are a couple of game specific tweaks required for the best experience with Kuan. Now, using an emulator allows for convenience in regards to capturing footage, but it's also convenient for the wallet. Kuan is one of the rare PS2 titles. Haunting Ground and Rule of Rose, other PS2 survival horror titles I cover on this channel, are in the same boat. Something to keep in mind if you're looking for the authentic experience. Kuan comes to us courtesy of From Software. Today, they're best known for the Soul series and adjacent titles, but prior to those titles, they made a wide variety of games in different genres. This isn't their first dip into horror. The Echo Knight trilogy released prior to the release of Kuan. They're no strangers to making atmospheric titles. To note, 2004, the year Kuan released, Hideki Miyazaki joined the company. He was not involved with Kuan. Booting up the game, we get an intro cutscene. Lord Fujiwara is attacked in his manor. A woman and singing twin children throw his body into a wicker chest. enters this chest and we're brought to the title screen. A few things to note here. The first is this unsettling song from a couple of children. This is a song we'll be hearing throughout Kuon. I'll return to the lyrics of the song later, as they do tie in with the story. Another thing of note is the artwork here. Team contracted artist Kayosuke Tijinai for artwork for the title. Some for advertising purposes, some for box art cover, and some that ended up as the title screen background. Something very unsettling about his work here. The occasional blinking adds to the unease. Starting a new game, we have a choice of two phases, the Yang and Yang. Yin will have us playing as Utsuke, while Yang will be Sakuya. A third phase opens up after the completion of the prior two. They're in the vein of the classic Resident Evil titles. Same areas, but in a different order with overlaps. Let's start with the Yin phase. Utsuke's father, Domon, an exorcist, is called to Lord Fujiwara's nearby manor that he believed is cursed. Utsuke and her sister set off to find him, but are separated and the game begins proper. <laughs> Right off the bat, there are elements that stick out as a From Software title. Things that you would see pop up in the Soul series. Lack of lip sync? Check. The game gives the option of voice dialogue in English or Japanese. English is the default. Since this takes place in Japan, Japanese voices were what I went with. The English voices are fine for what they are, nothing special. I believe we should go south. Zenki, Goki, shall we? Yes, Master. Zenma's wish is my command. The game is set during the Heian period of Japan, which stretches from 794 to 1185. A wide range of time, but we can narrow that time frame down. There are a couple of figures in Kuon that are based off historical figures. One being Domon, Utsuke's father, and Abe no Some, his rival. Abe no Some lived from 921 to 1005. Granted, the game takes plenty of liberties with these characters. The actual Abe no Some was a man, while here Abe is a woman. Without a doubt, Kuon's greatest strength is his atmosphere. The foreboding feeling never lets up the entire game, and yet it's never overwhelming, exhausting, or wears out its welcome. It's a number of factors adding up. The limited light, the soundscapes, and the excellent use of fixed camera angles. Let's look and listen to a few examples. There's a couple of moaning figures behind this wall that we won't visit for some time. There's 
There's one section with a priest chanting, and it makes the unsettling nature that much more intense. Of course, there's the twin children they're singing throughout the game we'll run into. They also talk in one voice. Classic horror trope of creepy children. Kuon makes great use of it. Another factor adding to the atmosphere is the fantastic use of camera angles. These are among the best I've come across in a fixed camera title. Some angles come from behind a wall, as if they're the point of view of someone watching us. Another great example is during the underground section, the lifeless body hanging in the forefront. One in which you return to later in the game when they're on fire. Very memorable. The gameplay is a more simplified version of survival horror. It's not the game's strength, although it's not a huge downgrade. There is some resource management involved, at least in principle. We don't have a limited inventory, although we have limited saves. Granted, the game throws a ton of them your way. Kuon takes place in the small interconnected space with some backtracking, finding various items to get past roadblocks. Instead of keys, we'll have specific cloths based on the planets to unlock specific doors. <laughs> Speaking of Roblox, Kuon has something more absurd Roblox I've come across in the game. But if you played the Souls games, in particular Dark Souls 2, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Just look at this tiny pile of rubble blocking my way. These are common in survival horror titles, but here it's at a whole other level. Come on, you can't bypass this? Speaking of other From Software Souls tropes, we get barefooted women as well. As I mentioned earlier, Hideki Miyazaki only joined From Software the same year Kuon was released in 2004. He didn't work on the title. Funny fact, he's become self-conscious of featuring barefoot women in his game since it's been pointed out to him. That's why Melania in Elden Ring has her feet in armor. As far as in-game puzzles go, there's just a couple of them. One being a sliding puzzle with the Chinese zodiac signs. A puzzle you could solve in three moves. Which took me a while to find out. Far too long. Several minutes. Combat tries something different compared to other survival horror titles. Execution-wise, it's a bit underwhelming. We have basic melee attacks for each of our characters, but the game focuses on magic cards, cards that we'll find throughout our adventures. There are two types of cards, one for casting spells and another for summoning. We can have two set at any given time. There's a decent variety in regards to spells and summons. I will know at times aiming the spells can be annoying. There were several times at point blank range where I'd miss when that seemed all but impossible. The summons have a nice variety. Some go down in a heartbeat, while others will be able to stick around for some time. There's a funny bit during the last phase when you get access to summons that weren't available before. You get a preview of them beforehand. Alright, looks like they'll wipe the floor with these skills. Well, wiping the floor happened, just not in the way I wanted. They did do better one-on-one -on -one with the other enemies. The game is generous with how many cards they give you. As long as you do some thorough exploration, you won't have an issue with running low. As far as enemies go, they have good designs, good sound cues, although I didn't find them as a major source of the game's horror. That comes elsewhere. This leads to some of the issues with Kuon where the horror falls short compared to its atmosphere, one element being Tempest. These are jump scares that could happen throughout our journey. If you run too much or take too much damage, they could pop out of nowhere. You'll get vertigo. To remove these effects, you'll have to press a button to meditate. This can take a few seconds depending how severe it is. <laughs> the 
The thing is, meditating also heals you. Yes, we have items for healing that we'll find, but healing during meditation feels unnecessary. It makes the game a trivial affair. Either you heal outside of combat with no enemies around through meditation, or use an item to heal if you take damage in combat. For a company known for challenging games, Kuon isn't one of them. But as I mentioned, it's the atmosphere and story that makes Kuon a worthwhile experience. On that note, let's dive more into these stories, so spoilers ahead. Kuon pulls heavy influence from the world of old Japanese ghost folktales. It's a story not told in a straight path, and up to interpretation. The game's story is told through cutscenes and collecting notes. The Yang and Third Phase, Kuon unlocked after completing the prior two, are for the most part straightforward to follow. It's the Yin Phase as Utsuke where things aren't so straightforward. Many years ago, a couple of mulberry trees were planted. However, these trees created silkworms instead of mulberries. The singing twins we come across are a manifestation of these trees. There was a great evil that was sealed by spikes many years ago. At some point, the spikes were removed. These silkworms could bring people back to life through the Kuon spell. In order for this to work, they must merge with another nine times, nine sacrifices. The song the twins are singing alludes to this Kuon spell. Sometime prior to the events of Kuon, Utsuke's sister was killed in an accident. One in which she thinks Utsuke is responsible for, when in all actuality, it was the twins. Their father Domon used the spell to bring her back to life. However, she has not yet merged the required nine times. That intro cutscene when you boot up the game? That's her merging with Lord Fujiwara, one of the nine sacrifices. Domon uses the manor as a place for experimentation with these silkworms. His disciples, including Sakuya, who we play as in the Yang phase, are brought to the manor to be sacrifices, to be part of the Kuon spell. Now here's where things get a bit tricky to piece together. As Kuon is an obscure title, there's limited information out there. Doing research took me to the board of Game Facts. Now that's a place I haven't thought of for some time. There are some consistencies about the events between the yin and the yang phase. This is due to the portion of the yin phase being in a dream, something the twins talk about, at least a portion of it. It's emerging from the second wicker chest that are the actual vents. It's at this point where Utsuke and her sister are one, something Domon brings up when we run into him. Ah, Domon's end goal is to have his rival, Abe no Some, be the ninth and final sacrifice. We play as Abe in the third, final phase of the game. I will note there is a bit of a clash with this setting in her character. She comes across as an action girl badass, right out of the pages of a manga. <laughs> Obviously, she's going to be powerful if Domon considers her a threat, but she feels like she came from a completely different story. Her phase is a quick affair to wrap things up. She defeats Domon, who becomes the final sacrifice. Instead of using the spikes to seal them off, Sakuya convinces Abe to let her live. <laughs>
In all actuality, the Kuon spell's end result is a rebirth as mulberries. During the credits, we see Sakuya with a young girl bearing a strong resemblance to Utsuke. This is the result of the Kuon spell. She, like the twins, is a manifestation of the mulberry trees. She is likely a reincarnation of all those used in the Kuon spell. This ending was a sequel hook to a sequel that would never come. Eva. Which is too bad as Kuan spins together a compelling narrative, one that stands out amongst other survival horror titles. It's a small, intriguing cast with surreal, dreamlike atmosphere. The dread and unease are unrelenting, but never to the game's detriment. The sequel could have continued what worked and refined what didn't, something along the lines of how Forbidden Siren 2 addressed the flaws of its prior title. Kuan was a sales flop, leading to its rarity. The North American version was released in December 2004, right in the midst of a time frame that may very well be the greatest stretch of quality game releases. Resident Evil forward release in January 2005 and turned the gaming world upside down. But there is a good reason that Kuon is remembered. Beyond the rarity factor, it has one of the strongest atmospheres I've come across in a survival horror title. From Software has always excelled at creating these kind of atmospheres, but Kuon is on another level. That alone makes it well worth checking out, whether through emulation or breaking the bank hunting down a physical copy. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, do all those things YouTube likes. Like, subscribe, comment. If you'd like to support the channel further, do consider my Patreon. Thanks again for watching.